हाई गाइज फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माई क्रेजी अपडेट्स Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this the Force Gurkha Extreme and right away let's open the engine bay because the biggest change is in the engine of this vehicle. Now this is heavy, it's metal. This is the engine Mercedes sourced OM611 which also does duty on the traveler but obviously it's more refined in this particular vehicle. So this heart of the matter is what really makes the Extreme a real extreme vehicle because it has so much more performance to offer. But before that let me tell you the changes. There are certain things which have changed on the front. Obviously you get fog lights here. and the grill for the headlight and the design is kind of like the mercedes g wagon so obviously you get the indicators here now these are leds by the way yeah that's right leds force motor logo right there boldly placed and of course this car screams suv wherever you look at it from meanwhile these are obviously optional the windshield guard of course and these wheels are also optional by the way they're not standard equipment these are sort of off road tires from yokohama along with alloy wheels too but just look inside okay it gets a 3 inch lift kit and you can see a lot of what's inside the engine bay and the suspension too because the suspension has been changed now it gets a solid axle at the front as well meanwhile all the four wheels use coil springs now, now these tires aren't very big the profile is obviously very big which enables good ride quality in this vehicle now these are geolander 80 tires which means that they are all terrain the tire size is 245716s and from the side i mean it looks a bit more mature than before because it doesn't get all those stickering like 4x4x4 or eov and stuff like that which was there in the previous gurkha obviously you get the gurkha knife right there extreme written on the side now this is a short wheel base it is a three door because of which in order to get into the rear you have to open the rear door which happens to be like this and there you can see it six people but not in the most comfort because there are no seat belts on offer here and obviously to get inside you have a footboard and of course there is a handle on the top seats are not very comfortable there are no adjustable headrests either headroom is decent it's not great for a person of my height there's a light place right here meanwhile there's a hole in the front headrest and obviously there's a handle to hold on to here the seat back is in scooped out but there's a magazine holder here and for a person who's tall like me there's not much amount of headroom and legroom either but the seat is decently comfortable although there is a lack of underthigh support a lot of places to hold on to although i think that two passengers here two passengers here and two at the front means this is a six seater or you can stuff six people here which makes it an eight seater but i doubt you want to do that when you go off road that is the dashboard of the vehicle and yeah it does look very plain basic yet rugged as well open the windows you can open them like this or you can open them like this not the best way to open it but then you can't really expect the windows to go down obviously because that will add to the cost and will actually change the basic architecture of this very vehicle now this particular car has a towing hook yes it's a proper towing bar actually so in case it gets stuck off road but yeah it doesn't get stuck off road this is to lock the rear door of this vehicle this jerry can holder is obviously optional it's not part of standard equipment light placement there again very similar to the one on the g wagon spare wheel placed on the tailgate and yeah there's a grill in front of the lights this is the brake light this is the reverse light and this is obviously the indicator you can see the ground clearance is massive it gets this mud flaps too the tires are also big enough and you get a side step because that makes it easier to get in and out of the vehicle now that luggage carrier is also optional how do i go and see the roof well there's a staircase here you can use that to climb the vehicle and here we go so right now i am on top of the gurkha and yes i can feel the suspension travel because when i stand on the roof the vehicle moves a bit soft suspension which really gives it a great ride quality that is the snorkel very much functioning gives it 550 mm of water wading capacity and i think it's time for me to get down which means that i can't really jump from here but hey i can try doing that so as far as interiors and features go there's not much to talk about the gurkha because it really lacks on that front it doesn't have many features on offer it doesn't really need to because this is all about keeping it basic yet keeping the capability alive opening the door no keyless entry no push buttons none of that nonsense here but the door pockets are very small in fact you can just keep a paper you can't keep a bottle there now you can see the doors they are tied with this strap again something which will remind you of the g wagon it has hinges by the way the g wagon and to get inside you have a side footstep 
you obviously can hold on to and you can just get in that's how comfortable it is meanwhile there's a dead pedal place right there as well quality levels feel much better than the one i driven last time you can see the review by clicking up somewhere meanwhile there are no power windows on offer it doesn't need power windows manual window roll down that's not all manual rear view mirror adjustment as well which is kind of bothersome because the cabin is actually wide to get to the other side i mean it is a little difficult because the center console is massive so right here there's a cup holder this space to keep a mobile phone there's another cubby hold right there let me turn off the hazard light this is the hazard light this is the fog light button the horn is a decent on this vehicle and these are the ac vents this is the tachometer placed in the center there's a 12 volt charging socket here these are the air conditioning control the air conditioning actually works really well on this vehicle and this is the headlight leveler of this vehicle so you can see there is plenty of stuff here you can actually see the screws as well uh, the screws there's a glove box which can be locked okay i have to hold it like that and the glove box is decent size because it is kind of deep as well and honestly it could have done with more creature comforts meanwhile there is the sun visor there's no mirror there's no light same as the case here no mirror no light this is manually adjustable as expected let me turn on the vehicle right away it actually rose to life so here we go yeah the air conditioning is making a lot of noise turning off the air conditioning this is the slot to put an audio system aftermarket this space to keep stuff here as well this is the switch for the locking differential of the rear axle this is the switch for the locking differential of the front axle this is the gear lever and in order to get into reverse you have to push this up and pull it behind now it is in reverse there's no reverse parking camera or parking sensors in this vehicle now this is the gear selector for the off road modes this is in two high right now i can get into four high like this push it here get into neutral pull it behind get into four low and that's as easy as it gets this is the handbrake of the vehicle and overall i would say that the cluster is very basic on the leftmost we get a fuel meter on the rightmost we get a temperature meter in the center we get a speedometer with the odometer on the top and a trip meter below and in order to trip it i just press this and yeah it kind of trips the way it likes yeah now it is on to zero meanwhile the telltale lights placed all over the place which means this is for the handbrake right now this is obviously the switch for the headlights and this is for the wipers this is the spray for the windscreen wiper but it's only just going to do the spray i have to manually use the wipers myself and this actually works decently well cleans the windscreen nicely but the windscreen is kind of flat which means that there's a lot of water which is going all over the place thankfully the wipers do a decent job although they are small they could have been slightly bigger as well so as you can see there's not much to talk about so let's get driving right away air conditioning off into first gear handbrake down revving the motor rev still 4000 rpm almost and off we go and let me tell you straight away you can instantly feel the increase in performance because this car absolutely flies when compared to before i mean there's so much amount of grunt on offer now i've hit the suspension test track which means i have to really slow down you saw the brakes are very good as well however abs is missing abs will be offered soon because it becomes mandatory from april 2019 now the ride quality off road is brilliant the ride quality on the road is even better because it just glides on the worst of road now you can see there is body movement obviously because the suspension is on the softer side but overall trust me the ride is absolutely sensational it decimates anything given in its stride because first and foremost obviously it has a long suspension travel it has got high profile tires and this being a body on frame vehicle does have that slight lumpiness at lower speeds but trust me for the most part it rides beautifully well now i'm obviously traveling on a road which is horrible but this car absolutely glides over it now because of the new suspension setup at the front which happens to be solid axle and coil springs this car can do 20 kilometers per hour on this road in fact let me increase the speed of this vehicle right now it will definitely do better so it can do 20 kilometers per hour comfortably the old vehicle would have done 10 kilometers per hour comfortably over here so that is kind of the big difference between both these vehicles because of the new suspension setup and that's not all force motors has also given it a new transfer case uh, yeah the steering doesn't offer much feel and feedback it is light at lower speeds not really light actually it is on the heavier side at lower speeds too and as you increase the pace it does weigh up decently well for a vehicle of this size but still i would say that it could have done with more feel and feedback especially considering the fact that now this has got a new found way of performance because of the increase in power and torque now obviously this is a new engine happens to be the om611 it is also shared with the force traveler this is more refined here but still it does make a lot of noise because refinement levels might have improved from before but still you can hear a lot of the engine especially when you rev the motor it can be felt inside the cabin the older gurkhas engine makes 85 power and guess how much torque well you guessed it right it makes just 230 newton meters of torque this one well let's find out 
Now this 2.2 liter engine produces 140 horsepower and the torque output is 320 newton meters. You can see the performance is very good. In fact, it is faster from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour by almost 6 to 7 seconds should reach the ton in around 15 to 16 seconds itself. 100 kilometers per hour, no problemo. In fact, the performance is so good on this vehicle right now that even out on the highway, you don't face any issues whatsoever. Taking a turn, yeah, some effort because the turning radius is quite big, but get onto the gas in second gear right now i'm picking up pace it absolutely flies the performance is really very good on the gurkha right now it feels quite sure-footed as well there's good amount of grip on offer from the tires as well however the handling is in great because the steering doesn't offer much feel and feedback and obviously there's a lot of body roll on offer downshift and it is in the mid of the power band it will just go there's good amount of low end punch because this engine doesn't have much lag as such but that said you know the mid range is where it totally shines it really revs very 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 fast which is quite impressive now in first gear revving the motor and i mean yes check this out okay yeah that is how much <laughs> fun this gurkha is hard under the throttle no problem just keeps going and going and going that is the level of performance on offer this engine really gives it a new lease of life that is how good it is but the gearbox the g32 again mercedes-benz sourced isn't very impressive unfortunately because the gearbox feels kind of rubbery and i feel there's a chewing gum stuck inside but that said once you get used to the gearbox you would enjoy shifting through the gears good amount of performance good amount of punch and definitely the motor really puts a smile on your face highway performance is not an issue at all mileage should be around 10 kilometers per liter and there's good amount of ground clearance you don't have to worry about ground clearance ride quality is brilliant as well handling could have been better brakes are decent yes abs is missed it will come soon so all said and done the gurkha was always a fantastic vehicle and now with a more powerful engine 55 horsepower increase is a lot of performance increase in a vehicle yeah <laughs> This car needs traction control, I think, <laughs> because power has been channeled to the rear wheels. And yeah, baby, this is what the Gurkha always deserved onto the throttle. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun guys. This is a brilliant engine. Kudos to Force to give it an engine which the Gurkha absolutely deserved. All the time top speed has increased to 140 km per hour. There'll be no problem now in terms of high speed overtaking either. So that is the level of increase in terms of performance and the Gurkha has become even better than before. It was always a great car but now it's become even better. Very sure footed, excellent performance on offer. Although it does take some effort to drive it because of the gearbox. Obviously the steering also is on the hardest side but definitely this vehicle now offers so much more now let me take a u-turn you can see taking a u-turn well i almost managed that which is terrific actually considering the fact that yeah it is on the heavier side everything is on the heavier side some amount of rattles in this vehicle but otherwise it's just brilliant performance is very 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 impressive but out on the road there are certain things which are not so impressive. Firstly, like I told you, the lumpiness in the ride because of the body on frame platform. Well, that's one issue. And the other issue is that the steering doesn't have much feel and feedback in the center head position. Yes, when cornering, it kind of behaves better. But in the center head position, it doesn't really offer much feel and feedback as such. Of course, the engine is the real highlight. It packs a lot of punch. And there is the 630D GT Motorbeam's test car right now, in which I actually came from Bombay. Downshift to second, get into the throttle. Yes, you run into the red line but there's good amount of performance on offer which makes it very impressive the earlier car used to struggle to reach 100 kilometers per hour this doesn't at all only thing i wished for was more feel in the center ahead position and overall ride is also very good i would say now the force gurkha range starts at rupees 12 lakhs goes all the way till 16 lakhs for this variant which happens to be the extreme the top of the line with 140 bhp of power now these prices are obviously on road mumbai which means that 12 to 16 lakhs for the force gurkha and the similar spec explosion which comes with the old engine costs 1 lakh rupees less at rupees 15 lakhs almost it is worth paying the additional rupees 1 lakh for the performance alone however you also get a lot of other essential goodies like a hard top which is not there in the Mahindra Thar which has to be ordered after market but most importantly this car is extremely capable off-road get on the gas there's good amount of punch the brakes also offer good amount of strong power only thing is the steering well the steering isn't made for really hard cornering and you get used to it pretty good now see taking a u-turn there is just too much effort to take a u-turn onto the gas and it pulls very nicely and strongly and dare i say it it also pushes me back into the 
seat that is the level of performance on offer so certainly the force gurkha has become an even better vehicle now and this mercedes engine does wonders in fact this particular engine the om611 also features in a few mercedes cars not now but used to the gearbox could have done with slicker shifts though and you can comfortably cruise at 100 km per hour no problem at all although a 6 speed gearbox would be a real nice touch now right now i'm in fifth gear at 70 km per hour burning the accelerator and this motor pulls now the peak torque comes in at 1600 rpm and stays till 2400 rpm and you can see the in gear acceleration is also very splendid in fifth gear it is pulling very swiftly now as you can see that there is no struggle from the motor anymore and at 100 km per hour the tachometer ticks at around 2200 rpm which is a comfort zone although this isn't a car you would really want to push to high speeds although high speed stability is okay it's just the steering which doesn't really offer much feel and feedback as such first gear revving the motor to 4000 rpm little bit of wheel spin and off we are the gearing is obviously quite short which is a boon when you're doing off roading and in terms of highway performance also now this car is apt So Force Motors has done a great job indeed not only in terms of performance but also off-road ability ride quality and overall appeal this vehicle offers a whole lot of bang for the buck yes 16 lakhs might sound a lot but for this amount you get something which no other vehicle can offer off-road ability and standing out from the crowd like a boss Anyways guys if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon Bye bye